We're concentrating on contrarian picks, identifying the chalk, high upside, high risk picks. These are my NFL DFS picks for week 10 of DraftKings. Let's go. What's up, Couch Fam? For those that don't know me, my name's Hussein the Brain, and you're watching the couch. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the bell notification icon. We're trying to get to 50k subscribers. So hopefully we can get there real soon. We're going to be focusing on GPPs, tournaments uh, for DraftKings, the main slate. So let's just start off with quarterbacks. There are a lot of quarterbacks, about six or seven really good quarterbacks. I would consider elite or I would, yeah, I would just consider them elite guys like Dak, Rodgers, Wilson, Brady, Josh Allen, um, even Herbert this week in a high scoring game. But I'm not going to go over all those guys. I'm going to go over two guys that I really believe is going to going to achieve value here. They're super cheap, so you can call them value plays. You can call them uh, punt plays. And the matchup's not really that bad. So the two guys, and they're almost exactly the same price, is going to be Taylor Heineke, 5,400, going against the Buccaneers. I really like this for a GPP pick or even a value pick. So it's going to be about, let's say let's say Tom Brady gets about 27 fantasy points, right? You'll only need Heineke to get around 19 fantasy points to achieve the same value. A guy like Tom Brady is 7,600. So for the super elite quarterbacks, you're going to be paying about 7 or 8K. For these guys I'm mentioning, you're going to be paying just over 5k so the value is definitely there these guys all they got to do is throw two touchdowns get over 250 passing yards and they'd be good and hey maybe they get some rushing yards what was that one game that was frustrating for me yes week 7 95 rushing yards for taylor heineke definitely out of the norm but he can easily get you uh, 15 to 40 rush yards easily. Um, that's that's Heineke for you. So again, that's 5,400. Taylor Heineke going against the Buccaneers. And we have 5,300. T-Law, Trevor Lawrence. Good matchup going against the Colts. And uh, he's so cheap, you know, right around the same price point. And he can also get some rushing yards as well so i like both those guys as value plays uh, for running max lots of elite options actually it's gonna be a very similar situation right we have who's amazing this week jt dalvin naji eckler um and then we have zeke aaron jones i love aaron jones um for cheaper we got james connor all those are great options but I'm going to be more inclined to going with the cheaper options, even if they're going to be chalky. So the cheap options are, I'm just going to go in order of how they're listed. So 47, Devin Singletary, that's going to be your contrarian pick. If Zach Moss is out, I like Devin Singletary and he'll still be contrarian because we just have so much better plays that you're going to get Singletary. No one else is going to pick him. It's going to be amazing. So he's my contrarian pick. Not a lot of confidence in him. What's the the Jets? How, how are they against uh, running backs? Oh, they're uh, dead last. Uh, so they allow the most fantasy points to running backs. The Jets defense, that is. Again, Singletary, 4,700, going against the Jets as a contrarian pick. Okay? Now, for a chalk play, one that we're much more confident in, that's going to be Dearness Johnson. I was hoping I clicked the right name because it said D. Johnson. There's so many D. Johnsons in fantasy football in the NFL. So Dearness Johnson, uh, we know Chubb is out. We know Felton is out. We know John Kelly is out. And Kareem, everyone's out for the Browns. So Dearness Johnson, the only running back left. And he's only 4,700. Not a great matchup. Um, I know it uh, it may look like that with this 25 here. Uh, not a great matchup, though. But um, he'll still, he should be able to ball out. So I, I do have tremendous confidence in Dearness Johnson. He will be chalky. So what do, you, what do I think? Should we play the chalk in a GPP? 
I'm saying yes, I would not be afraid to to go eat some chalk with the running backs this week. And the next guy, very chalky, who I love, I've been tweeting about all week, Mark Ingram, 4,500, going against the Titans. He'll get a lot of carries, a lot of targets, a lot of snaps. Absolutely love Mark Ingram for this price. He's going to be chalky. Um, and uh, I'm going to eat that chalk, baby. Chalk Ingram, the second. I'm going with Mark Ingram. Okay. I did want to give you guys some other options here. I love those two running backs. And, hey, maybe you pick three running backs like Singletary or one of these guys. It's it's trending towards Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, both those running backs, to being out. Now, they are technically questionable. Both have concussions. Both did not practice Friday. They haven't practiced at all this week. And so, with 4,400, we're going with what supposedly could be expected to be the number one running back for the Patriots. That's Brandon Bolden. Uh, keep in mind that the Patriots do play... Uh, or we say, luckily, thankfully, the Patriots do play in the first wave of game, so this won't affect anything. If all of a sudden Damian Harris and Ramondre, I don't even know if this is possible, but just I'm just saying the off chance that Damian Harris is able to play or something, we'll have plenty of time to uh, take out Brandon Bolden and adjust, maybe put in Mark Ingram if you had to. What I'm just trying to say is the Patriots play early, and that's a good thing if we're starting any Patriots players. So Brandon Bolden is 4,400, should be the RB1 going against the Browns. That's the same game we've been talking about, the Dearness Johnson game. And if you're looking for a, well, those are all kind of punts, but I do call this the 4K, the 4K club or the minimum price club. And so that's going to be J.J. Taylor, um, who should be the RB2. And I'm not able to find him. Let's, uh, there we go. JJ Taylor. I forgot the dots there, the periods. Uh, 4,400 going, uh, sorry, 4,000 going against the Browns. Minimum price should be the RB2 for the Patriots. Same exact, exact game. Game script for this could scream like a Ronald Jones game. Now, he's not been that, like, he's not good in the past game. Maybe not good at pass pro. Um, and, you know, he hasn't really looked that good as a runner this year. But nonetheless, he is a super duper punt, contrarian, and minimum price running back. Just wanted to give you some other options. And my least favorite uh, minimum price running back is going to be Dante Foreman. Essentially the RB2 for the Titans or the second runner. For the Titans, since Jeremy McNichols is really solidified as just the pass catching back, pass catcher, pass catching back, third down back, scat back, whatever uh, you want to call McNichols. Okay, those are the running backs. Let's move on to wide receivers. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It's not just a bunch of punts. So we can spend up a little bit here if we need to because we're saving literally everywhere else. So let's talk about. Tom Brady's receivers. Antonio Brown is out. Rob Gronkowski is out. Uh, so Godwin is questionable. Mike Evans, everyone's picking Mike Evans. Mike Evans is a stud. Everyone's picking Tom Brady too, by the way. That's what that's the popular pick. Tom Brady, Mike Evans. Oh, let's party. Let's go. Everyone loves them. They're going to be the best, the best. So what do we do naturally? Uh, Mike Evans is 6,900. I'm not saying I don't like him, but if you watch my GPP videos, you get the drift. We like to go with contrarian picks here. And if we just so happen to be right, we'll go straight to the top, baby. Mike Evans, 6,900. Pretty decent price. Great upside. Great wide receiver. But if Godwin outscores him or Mike Evans for some reason, for some odd reason, lays a dud, right? Maybe he catches a touchdown then the refs call it back. You never know. Um... Something could happen, or they just tackle him, uh, pass interference, right? <laughs> you never know. Like this, these things happen. Wide receiver is an up and down position naturally. It's an inconsistent position. Um, quarterback and running back are the two most consistent positions. So, Chris Godwin, questionable tag. Questionable tag deters people from picking him. Price is more expensive. Deters people from picking him. He's going to be much more contrarian and. I mean, guys, are you kidding me? 
He's going to be so contrarian. He has so much upside. This could be the best game he has all year. Now, it's going to be hard to beat those last two performances, 31 and 28 fantasy points. But I think he has a shot at doing that against Washington. So absolutely love him. Keep in mind, though, that he is questionable. He does have an injury. He might not play. Bucks do play in the early slate. So you'll be able to take him out of your lineup. And, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, an easy plug right there could be Mike Evans, right? Or really anybody in that price range, uh, Keenan Allen, CeeDee Lamb. Um, you know, it would be easy to, to swap him out since he's so expensive. All right. So, I, you know, I'm again, I like Mike Evans, but I know Godwin's going to be a lot more contrarian. That price and that questionable tag is going to scare off a lot of people. I mean, some people pick their lineups like... Wednesday or Thursday don't even look at this or Friday and they're like oh Chris Godwin I'm not picking him and they don't even check it like a lot of entries are like that and so that's why I I do know people will be scared to pick Chris Godwin it's just it's gonna happen um some more options 6500 Tyler Lockett I feel like it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit of a contrarian pick here not you know what? Not really contrarian, actually, but I just I feel like his ownership's not going to be too high. Um, if you want a great value pick, that's going to be Amari Cooper, sixty two hundred in a high scoring game against the Falcons. So that's a good pick. If we want to save money, we're going to go with T Y Hilton. He won't be contrarian, but I don't think he'll be chalky either. Forty seven hundred. He's back going against the Jags, and Carson Wentz is playing really well putting up a lot of pass yards. So that's really cheap. You can't really find a deal quite like this ever. 47, that's almost half the price of the top tier uh, receivers. Um, if we really want to save, I have two punts for you guys. That's Deontay Harris, Saints wide receiver. You notice that Titans allow the most fantasy points to wide receivers, uh, 4,000 Deontay Harris. Uh, Trevor Simeon is the starter, by the way. And if you're looking for a super risky punt, this is nothing more than a complete flyer, complete dart throw, complete punt, maybe s extreme salary relief if you really want it. Um, if I was just to enter a, a big GPP once, I would not pick this guy, just to be clear. I don't love him, but Marquez Valdez-Scantling Came back last week, had Jordan Love throwing the ball, didn't see a lot of snaps, but that's his first game in several weeks. So now it's his second game. Now we're expecting Aaron Rodgers to be back, going against the Seahawks. And that's why I like this. He will be contrarian. He will be cheap. He is boomer bust. That's a good thing for GPPs. So I do like him as a alternate pick, salary relief, super punt at wide receiver. And look, I'm I'm saving you guys a lot of salary cap with this video. At least I'd like to think so. At least I hope so. Um, and you know, so yeah, if you think I am, you think I'm saving you guys a lot of salary cap, smash that like button. Show your appreciation. Thank you so much. Um, if not, go ahead and smash that dislike button. It's all good. Uh, for tight ends, lots of good uh, high-end tight ends. But keep in mind, Kyle Pitts, I like him a lot. Priced at 5800 Now, the two big dogs, Waller and um, Kelsey, they play each other, I think, Sunday night football. And even Kittle's not on here because he plays Monday night. But we do have... Scroll down a little bit so we get a lot more value. At 3900 Pat Fryer Muth. Love him. We know that Juju's out for the year. We know that Claypool's out this week. Probably is going to miss one or two more weeks as well. But Pat Fryer Muth, one of my favorite players. He's been absolutely crushing it. Eric Ebron is back. But still, you know, eye for an eye or whatever. One down, one back in, whatever. Next Whatever. All I'm trying to say is that, yes, Claypool is out and Eric Ebron's back in. Or so Eric Ebron's back in, but Claypool's out, right? So it's not like we're getting back Claypool, we're getting back Juju, and we're getting back Ebron. No, they're still shorthanded. They still need players to throw to. And uh, I think Fryer Moe's still going to get six-plus targets this game. Um, right under him, 3,700 Ricky Seals Jones. I love this. Could be a good stack too with Taylor Heineke. This is super cheap because we were kind of expecting Logan Thomas to be back. He's not. Logan Thomas is out. Ricky Seals Jones still super cheap priced. 
and uh, could do some damage against Washington football. Uh, sorry, against the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary. Um, Dan Arnold could be interesting stack with uh, Trevor Lawrence. Just wanted to just quickly mention that he's not on my tight end list, my notes. Um, but I have two punt tight ends that I love. That's number one, OJ Howard with Rob Gronkowski out. I'm going with OJ Howard. He's shown some flashes or one flash one time. That was week six. And uh, we'll see if he can get back to that. I do believe he will be the number one tight end with Gronk out. But we'll see. This team is a little unpredictable and is always uh, dealing with some kind of injuries everywhere. So everything's in flux. But he's my guy instead of Bray. I would go OJ Howard, 2,700, by the way. Um. And if you're looking for a super punt, this is more of a fun pick. Not necessarily recommending him, but I do have something called the Minimum Price Club, and I always try to put players in there. And Jonu Smith, minimum priced, 2500 Not really looked well, okay? But there are some rumors that he might be used in the backfield. So if Jonu Smith is taking snaps at tight end, taking snaps at wide receiver, taking snaps in line, and taking snaps in the backfield, he just might do some damage, just might do it enough to get a touchdown. And you know what? If you pay minimum price for a tight end and he gets in the end zone, that's going to be worth it, right? Because that right away, that's going to be a minimum of seven fantasy points. We love that. Um, yes, seven. That's right. He's going to probably get a reception, probably get some yards. So, yeah, it's going to be around seven or more. So I do like Jonu Smith purely as a punt play. For defenses, hey, this is how I figure. I save so much money everywhere else. We can spend up. So I'm going to name my top four, five defenses I would pick. But hands down, my favorite is going to be the Cardinals. They're 3700 So the price is somewhat decent. They're the number one ranked defense this week. Heading into this week, going against the Panthers. Um, Sam Darnold is out. P.J. Uh, Washington is playing. P.J. Walker. I keep doing that. I think about it, too, a lot, and, I, and I'm, I'm just going to keep getting both of them mixed. Uh, Philip Walker uh, is playing, so uh, Cam Newton unlikely to start, um, which wouldn't be good for them anyways, so he just signed to the team. Anyway, yeah, Cardinals is my favorite. If you want other defenses, we got the Steelers for 4,100 going against Detroit. We got the Bills, eh, 4,000 going against the Jets. No one wants to start them, though, right? Colts D, much cheaper, 3,600 going against the Jags. And my super-duper punt. Look, if some if if Tom Brady were to have a bad game, it could possibly be this one. Maybe the Washington football team is a little bit energized after their bye week. I don't have any confidence in this, but at 2,100, it's super cheap. And I actually do believe this one's got a shot. Like, look at this defense. I don't know how your league scoring is, but, I mean, they seem to put up fantasy points. They seem to every week get just about six or seven fantasy points. Like, it's not been that bad in terms of fantasy. Now, like I said, I this low floor, just a punt play. I don't really believe in this, but, hey, if you're doing something crazy, if you're spending up on running backs and you want to, go with the Washington football team defense, I don't hate it. I mean, it is literally the worst matchup possible going against the Bucks on paper. Uh, but that is my risky defense pick if I had to pick one. Again, they're 2100 basically minimum price. You can't get any cheaper than that other than 2000 Washington defense, baby, going against the GOAT. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow me everywhere at Fantasy Couch. I'm on Insta. I'm on Twitter. Where am I on? TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, everywhere. Follow me at Fantasy Couch. We also have a second YouTube channel, Fantasy Couch Podcast. Check that out as well. Let's get that W this week also. Let's finish in the green. Every time you're in the green, it's a good thing. So always just try to finish in the green. And uh, if you don't win the big money, it's okay. As long as you're in the green, it's a good thing, man.